Hello everybody, welcome to Storytime with Bridie. And Rata. <laughs> what are we going to read today, Betty? Today we are going to read Maui. Awesome, I have to sit down. So this is a retelling of Maori legends by Peter Gossage. Awesome, awesome book. And we are going to read The Fish of Maui. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Maui had magical powers and was much better at everything than his four foster brothers, Roto, Mua, Pai and Taha. They planned to go fishing the next day but had not told Maui as they were jealous and did not want him to come. So you can see here they're all planning and down here Maui is awake listening to everything. Early next morning Maui hid himself in the bottom of his brother's canoe. His brothers laughed as they set off little knowing that Maui Nukarau, the trickster, was going with them. They paddled out beyond the breakers until they found a good place to fish, but it was not good enough for Maui Atamai, the quick-witted. He sprang from his hiding place at the bottom of the canoe. And look, they're astonished to see him. The brothers, still shocked by Maui's magical appearance, obeyed his order to paddle on. On and on they paddled. They begged Maui to stop, but he would not. As the sun began to set, the land was already out of sight. All that night, Maui paddled by the light of Marama, the moon. One by one, his brothers fell asleep. The sea miles slipped beneath the keel of the canoe as something drove Maui on and on. Morning found the brothers grumpy and surly. Maui was at last satisfied with a fishing place, but as Utu, revenge, his brothers would give him no bait. So he struck himself on the nose and smeared the magic jawbone hook with his own blood. Around and around his head, he whirled the jawbone of his ancestor. Out and up, it crept in a widening spiral, like a great carving in the air. Then he flung it free to plummet like Tikawao, the shag, into the ocean. The line plunged through the depths with the speed of a taiaha. The bone struck wood and locked in the arm of a carving. Maui, on the other end of the line, did not know that his hook was sneered on the tikotiko of a fori rooted deep in the back of a giant being. He was not landing a fish, but fishing a land. He tugged, he wrenched, he heaved, he strained with every muscle in his body. At the bottom of the ocean, something began to stir. Above, Maui chanted karakia that passed down the line and into the great fish. They called on it to rise up, to become light and float to the surface. But it knew the sea was its home and began to fight. I love this picture. Isn't that wonderful? The land looking up. We Maui. That. Yeah, that's right, we do. Maui braced himself but as the Mom, sea began to churn and boil. Our house is on up. That's right. Planting his feet firmly astride the canoe, he started to pull in the line. His terrified brothers made no move to help him and they clung to the bucking craft. The fish thrashed in fury, but his strength was not as strong as Maui's will. Power coursed through Maui, and the great fish ballooned to the surface. And what a fish it was! His tail stretched away to the north, and his head lay far in the south. I must get my hook, said Maui. Do not touch him while I am gone. He is smooth and flat, and I do not want him damaged. But the moment Maui was out of sight, his brothers began to hack out their share. For after all, hadn't they helped with the paddling? The great fish writhed in agony as the paddle blade sliced into his flesh. In no time, his once smooth back was a jagged mass of valleys and ranges. The fish of Maui was now a rugged land. You may have visited Te Ika a Maui, or even be living on his back at this very moment, like we do. 
for he is the North Island of New Zealand. Doesn't it look like a rather battered stingray? Thank you very much everyone for listening. Can I say hello to a couple of friends in Hamilton. Harvey and Zaria are listening. I hope you're having an awesome time. And Harvey, I hope you're beating your dad at Uno. See you later, guys.